Hello Tangerines from Las Vegas. I just arrived here from Mexico and today I am staying at the worst rated five-star hotel I've ever seen in my life. So I'm gonna share with you my experience and see if it really is as bad as people are saying. The hotel I'm talking about is Conrad at Resorts World. If you're not familiar with Conrad, this is like the top of the end Hilton chain. So I would expect this to be an amazing experience, but because the reviews were so bad, the prices of the rooms were pretty affordable. Like a normal Conrad is gonna cost you 300 plus a night, but on, when I was looking for dates here, I was able to snag rooms below 100. In this video, I'm gonna show you one of my favorite Vegas hacks that got me a $300 a night room upgrade here and more than $200 in food and beverage credit, amongst other things. In the reviews for this place, a lot of people were saying that the check-in experience was super slow and the employees were totally incompetent. Well, I got here at 3.30 p.m. on a Thursday, so a very normal check-in time, but I breezed right through it. The guy I worked with was great, so uh, so far I'm really happy with this experience. The hotel is beautiful, the lobby is beautiful, the casino is all brand new and it looks amazing. Uh, Check-in went good, so uh, now I'm gonna head up to the room and see what that's like. I'll give you guys a quick tour of my room here. So you walk in the front door and to the left is a half bathroom. This is one of two bathrooms in this place. Then out here you have a really nice living room area with lots of places to sit, uh, big TV on the wall. So out the window here you have views to the North Strip. They call this city view and not a strip view, but it's still nice views. I mean, you can see Circus Circus, the Strat, uh, downtown Las Vegas there in the distance. Over here, they provide some coffee and teas. Um, over here, there's some stuff you can purchase, as is in the mini bar. But I was pleasantly surprised, you get an actual fridge that you can use. <laughs> That's always nice. I hate when there's just a mini bar, no fridge. It's so annoying. And then from here, we walk into this other room that can close off. There's a door there. You can walk to the right to see the bedroom or to the left. And this is like a really well-lit mirror where you can get ready in the morning or going out on the town at night. Uh, over here, they have a couple of nice bathrobes and then slippers as well. I always love that after taking a nice shower at one of these fancy hotels to put on one of the robes. <laughs> Walk in here, this might be my favorite part of the place. A beautiful bathroom with a really well lit mirror. And then you have a couple doors here. On the left is a toilet and on the right is a huge shower, like enormous. I don't know if you'll be able to really see the size of it in this video, but this thing is freaking huge. Now let's spend a moment on this bathtub. See this little guy here? I love that you get a little rubber ducky and this is by Nectar Bath Treats. So the bottom of this is a bath bomb and that dissolves and then you're gonna be left with that rubber duck floating in your bath. <laughs> I love that. Just feels good to be in this bathroom. And then out here you have a king size bed, a nice chase lounge over by the window so you can sit there reading a book or sipping on a cocktail while you look out there to downtown and the Strat. And then another TV on the wall here. I really like it. I like it a lot. I've stayed at just about every five-star hotel on the Las Vegas Strip and most of them multiple times. So in this video, I wanted to do a little comparison of what it's like staying at the Conrad versus those others and what kind of luxury you might expect. I only booked one night at Conrad because the reviews were so bad, I thought it was just going to be a laughable five-star experience, a terrible experience. But, I mean, it wasn't perfect, but I did really enjoy my stay there and I do wish I booked longer. Now I want to give a comparison of Conrad versus the other five-star hotels on the Strip. In terms of, like, the level of luxury, I feel Conrad's right up there at the top. I think the only ones that are similar in luxury are the Wynn and Encore. Um, all the other five-star hotels I've stayed at, um, Bellagio, Aria, Cosmopolitan, Venetian, Palazzo, I think they're all a step below these hotels in the level of luxury. So, like the feeling of the hotel, I love it. 
However, the cleanliness of the room, well, that was a major fail on Conrad's part. Compared to the other five-star hotels on the Strip, man, all those others are super anal about everything being totally clean, and Conrad was just not up to that level. However, the resort itself seemed reasonably clean, so they have that going for them, I guess. As for the location, honestly, it's not the best. It's on the northern end of the Strip, uh, and when I'm staying at one far end of the Strip, I find myself staying at my hotel a lot more than if I'm staying mid-Strip. Now, this isn't necessarily a bad thing. I don't mind being up at the north end of the Strip where Conrad's at. Uh, and if I do want to get to another place on the Strip, well, I can walk there, take some of the uh, free trams, or it's just like a $10 Uber to get pretty much anywhere on the Strip, which isn't that big of a deal to me, especially if I'm saving $100 or $200 a night just to be a little bit further north. Yeah, I'm going to do that for sure. This probably has to do with the hotel being so new, but everything there at Resorts World is super new and really nice from the lobby to the casino floor to the decor um, like and that crazy huge ball thing they have uh, that lights up. Yeah, everything is really nice, new, clean. Um, so I really love that aspect of Resorts World. And if you're confused about why I'm sometimes referring to it as Conrad and other times Resorts World, well, Resorts World is the whole resort. And Conrad is one of, I think, three hotels within Resorts World. So you have Conrad, you have the Las Vegas Hilton, and then Crockford's. I also went to the fitness center while I was at Conrad, and that thing is nice. Oh my gosh, I could not believe how nice the equipment there was. And they provide towels and water, like all this brand new equipment and quite expensive equipment that you don't see in a lot of gyms. So I really love that aspect as well. If you didn't know this already, drinks, both alcoholic and non-alcoholic, are complimentary when you're gambling in Vegas. And in general, the nicer the casino, the better offerings they're going to have. But something I was really disappointed with at Resorts World were the level of offerings. Because, for example, I asked what kind of tequila they offer, and the only option was Hemador, which if you're not familiar with it, it's a pretty low-end tequila. Whereas, if I go across the street to win or encore, I can get Don Julio Reposado or Don Julio Añejo, which is literally four, five, or even more uh, times expensive than Hemador is. So if I was trying to get free drinks while gambling, well then Resorts World would definitely not be my first choice for that. One of my favorite Vegas hacks, the hack that got me a $300 room upgrade, more than $200 in food and beverage credit, amongst other things, is booking my room through American Express's Fine Hotels and Resorts. Booking through this program gets you so many awesome benefits, it's almost always worth it in Vegas. The list of benefits is kind of long, so I'm just gonna go through them one by one. But the very first thing is, it gets you a room upgrade if it's available. So when I went to look for dates to stay here, there were, this day that I'm staying was as little as $89 a night for the basic room. So, if I booked that room, I would get the one level upgrade to a strip view if it were available upon arrival. However, there's another little trick inside of a trick here because I'm looking at the different room options and I see that the next level up from a strip view is a suite that costs more than $400. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna pay $20 more to book this strip view and I'm gonna hope, I'm gonna cross my fingers that I get that $430 suite. And sure enough, I got here and I got the exact suite I was hoping for. You get early check-in and late check-out. So I was able to check in at noon and then my check-out time wasn't until 4 p.m. I love a 4 p.m. check-out because you're there for most of the day. So it almost feels like you get to stay another day. But not only that, if you're switching hotels with a 4 p.m. checkout, there's no time in between when you have to check out of your first hotel and check into your next hotel. Whereas a lot of times you'll have an 11 a.m. checkout and then you can't check into your next hotel until 3 p.m. So you have to leave your bags with 
bellhop or something for several hours unless you can get a late checkout and early check-in. So with all that said, that 4 p.m. checkout is a huge deal for me. Upon checking in at Conrad, I also got two free welcome drinks at the lobby bar. I didn't even know that I was going to get this benefit, but it was one of the benefits of fine hotels and resorts. Another small benefit is that you get free Wi-Fi, but since Wi-Fi is already included in the resort fee, they just give you a small credit towards your resort fee. In this case, it was a $5 credit, which I do think is kind of BS because like if you're paying for Wi-Fi at one of these resorts, they charge you like 15 or $20 a day but then when it's already included, you get a $5 credit. But you know, whatever, it's a $5 credit that I wouldn't have received otherwise. Another huge benefit of booking through this program is that at every hotel, they have some perk that you get once per stay. And at Conrad, it's a really good one. It's a $125 food and beverage credit. Usually it's like a $100 food and beverage credit or a $100 spa credit. I definitely value the food and beverage credits higher than I do the spa credits, um, but 125 towards food and beverage that could be used at one of many restaurants in the resort was awesome. This $125 food and beverage credit, you only get it once per stay. So whether you book for 10 days through fine hotels and resorts or you book one day, you get the same one $125 credit so let's say you're coming to Vegas for a week. You could strategically do several different fine hotels and resorts bookings to get this credit multiple times. But something else that comes with this program is you get daily breakfast for two people. Now, you're only gonna get credit for one person if you say there's one person staying in the room. However, if at check-in you're like, oh yeah, it's me plus one other person, well then you're going to get the full two people breakfast credit every single day. At Resorts World, this was a $66 credit. Uh, the downside was that it can only be used at the restaurant called The Kitchen, which wasn't bad. It, it, was, it was a nice breakfast restaurant, uh, but it's huge to get this every single day, $66 to spend on breakfast. This fine hotels and resorts program is only available to American Express Platinum and Centurion card holders. So if that sounds like something that would interest you, we'll link to it in the description below. And because I'm a Hilton Gold member through my Amex Platinum card, that also gives me access to other benefits. For example, I got a special check-in line at Conrad and I didn't have to wait in Gen Pop uh, with everyone else. Also, I got free water bottles upon check-in and because of the gold status, I could either choose getting a thousand Hilton points or getting $50 a day in credit towards breakfast, which is way more valuable than a thousand Hilton points. So I went with that. So because of having this credit card and because of booking through fine hotels and resorts, in addition to all those other benefits, I had $241 in food and beverage credit to use in 24 hours. And let me tell you, I ate like a freaking king. <laughs> if you're interested in the Amex Platinum to get access to these perks, well, the cost of it depends on what country you're applying in. For example, if you apply where I live in Mexico, the annual fee is $2,000. Uh, but for those of you in the United States, it's $695. And while that is a really steep annual fee for a credit card, it comes with so many other benefits. I get thousands upon thousands of dollars in benefits from it every year. Uh, they give you travel credits and uh, credits to various streaming services, and it gives you the best lounge access in the airports, just all kinds of stuff in addition to fine hotels and resorts. But if you're interested in that, we'll link to that down in the description below. You know, I think because of the terrible reviews that Conrad gets, they've had to lower the room prices a lot. I don't expect this to stay this way forever, but as long as the room rates are low, I'm gonna be taking advantage of that. But you know, Conrad's are expensive. If you wanna stay at the one in New York, it's like $400 a night. Uh, if you want to stay in the one in Puerto Vallarta or Tulum, you're looking at like $700 a night. It's a really, really expensive hotel. So to be able to stay at one for around $100 a night is huge in my opinion. In addition to making videos about our life in Mexico, we also do Vegas tip videos showing you how to come to Vegas 
and have a better time and do it for less money than you're spending now. So if you want to check out those videos, we'll link a playlist right here that you can continue watching until we see you next week. Please subscribe to our channel and one more thing before you go. Gong that bell so you get notified every time we release a new video and we will see you on Saturday.